Happy Sabbath once again. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath once again. Uh, blessed be the name of God. Once again, I want to welcome you for this divine hour for the place of worship life. And people are worshiping online. And we want to welcome you too. And uh, to pick it with, uh, let's all join and sing song number 600 and 462 from SDA Hymnal. It is called as Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. 462. Blessed Assurance. Yeah. 
hands up once again to each one of you. I hope the presence of the Lord will enrich each one of us as we contemplate on this divine hour. I want to welcome each one who has been worshipping with us online, might be YouTube, might be on Facebook. And I believe the presence of the Lord will be able to touch you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever you might be. I know the presence of the Lord will help you, enable you to be strengthened today. And I hope that you all are safe, and I hope that you all are good. And we wish from the Hopeside Community Church that the blessing of the Lord be poured upon you. And uh, how are you all doing? And I hope that things will be absolutely fine during this uh, turbulence time and uh, unprecedented time that we are facing through. And I pray this, may the good Lord of grace be able to guide you through in the paths of righteousness. Once again, each one, and once again, people who are watching online, either it might be on YouTube or on Facebook, be blessed and know that we are here to pray for you. And uh, may the blessing of the Lord be there as we uh, contemplate in God's word in this divine hour. To begin with, let's all, uh, before we could have a song, I think so, I have a few announcements to be made. I want you to please pay close attention towards uh, it. Uh, this is the second week of the month, which is always focused on health matters. Here's a quote to reflect on this thing. Here's to better habit. Positive thinking, clean eating, and most of all, loving yourselves. This was written by unknown. We don't know who wrote this, but here's to better habits. Positive thinking, clean eating, and most of all, loving yourself. And uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic, all are required to wear face mask covering during the service. That's what is maintained. And of course, we do maintain the six feet distance here. And uh, we are going to have Prophecy Live is on every Saturday at 3 p.m. You can watch it live on YouTube at youtube.com. And our weekly services will continue at this location until we find a place to meet again. And of course, there's going to be a lunch after the service. All are welcome to eat and fellowship with one another. So these are the few announcements that I had. And, uh, uh, once again, I take this opportunity to welcome each one of you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And to begin with, let's all join in, in singing a opening hymn from SDA hymnal 294. 294. Would you be free from the burden of sin? 294. Would you be free from the burden of sin? That will be our opening song. Possible? Let's all rise up and sing this beautiful song.
It is time to pray. And uh, does the church have any praise report or prayer requests? I have a pray, um, praise report. Okay. I have a praise report and a confession. Confession, okay. Uh, first is praise report. And it's the end of the year for an academic uh, in our hospital. Uh -huh. So I got a good report, um, uh -huh. good performance review. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And um, the second one is my confession. And as I was, I always watch the news. And every time I watch the news, I see California, where my children are, and... Um, uh, Washington and Oregon about the wildfire. So, uh, and people who have lost their homes and lost their loved ones and things like that. But it really made me to feel sad. And I just watch it and then I go about with my business. But last week when it hit close to my own house in Oregon, Salem, Oregon, and um, above all, my husband has to evacuate from there, because of the fire, so I really thought whenever we see things like that, we have to really uplift God and not only just make it to pass away, but you. And um, I thank God for most of our, most of the people whom I know, and some of them have lost their houses in Oregon, and some of them are okay, mm -hmm. but I thank God my husband is okay and my house is paid. Oh, praise the Lord. Yes. Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God protects his children. Even though certain things might be able to happen in our life, but still his place and his mercy have endured. Okay, so thank you for the testimony and uh, may God bless you and your family. And we continue to pray for, you know, many people who have been suffering uh, because of this fire, because of hurricanes, tornadoes and that. Uh, you know, all this stuff is not so easy. You know, once it happens to us, then we will know the implication of what it might be. But, you know, when people are suffering, and it's nice to uphold them in our prayers. Any other prayers report or prayer requests? Of course, we will continue to pray for Sister Vilasini, Sister Suvasini, and uh, our lovely daughter, Sister Pansy, too, and their family members. And still, they are unable to come out of the grief of the loss of their father. So we will uphold them in our prayers every other. And Lalitaka told me to say for um, unspoken requests mm -hmm. and for me also unspoken requests. Okay, so we continue to pray for Sister Amuda and Sister Lalita for the unspoken uh, request. And of course, Sister Mary, we're going to pray for you also for the unspoken request. Please do uphold Hope Side Church so that we all might united to join together and see what the best we can render service to the community at large and get spreading his word. And please do remember me also in your prayers so that the Lord might be able to use me mightily in this last days. Uh, let's not forget mm -hmm. that uh, we need to intentionally pray for uh, the healing of uh, this country, even though we keep hearing about that uh, particular phrase. There is so much division, animosity, enmity, even within the church, as we experience ourselves. The challenge is there as to whether we should talk about this openly. But I think a time has to come when we have to talk about what Christianity is, not just in preaching but in practice. And that somehow Christianity is held up high, no matter differences. And uh, like Martin Luther, even Martin Luther King Jr., they, they put their lives at risk to speak publicly about the, uh, the abuses, the, the, the way people have been hurting each other in the name of religion, politics, whatever. It is open season now. So much of uh, animosity, enmity going on. So let's pray about how we can be, at least as hopes are, uh, be able to shine for that which really matters most, which is love, love to all, love to one another, no matter the differences. So let's continue to pray for the church we met in, 
and uh, let's continue to pray that we, 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 we can all be reconciled. I don't know how or when, <laughs> but uh, we can at least continue to pray. Let's certainly seek the Lord. Our gracious, loving, and living Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify your name for all the blessings of life that you can bestow upon each one. The very life of existence is because of your love and grace, O oh Father. You loved us, you cared for us, you saved us. We are sinful ancient human beings, we are not worthy of your blessings and your love. But many a times, we might be unfaithful, but the Lord is faithful and His grace have endured in our lives and sustained us thus far. The very life of existence is because of your love and grace. Give us a grateful heart that we could be grateful and may your name be glorified. O Lord, we want to put forth ourselves this afternoon. We seek your guidance, O Father. O oh, Father, thank you for the privilege of prayer where we can be able to speak to your, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Any sense that we are coming to against you in our know, words, in our know, actions, in our know, thoughts, please do forgive us. Accept us as we are. Answer this little prayer. Especially want to thank you for the testimony of our sister Abuda. Thank you for saving our family and their lives. I don't want to remember, oh Father, people who have been perishing in California because of the wildfire which is blazing through. I don't know how many people have been affected there. I don't know what might be their problem. Lord of heaven, please have mercy on their lives. They might be going through a whole lot of things in their mind because of the loss of people and their property and things like that. Help them to be reminded that one day we have to leave this home. When we see all these natural calamities which is taking place, oh Father, we only know that the Lord is absolutely coming soon and the signs of his last coming is absolutely fulfilling. And there's no escape that one day we have to leave the home that we love here on this earth. And prepare us for that, O oh Father, pray this event. Continue to be with Sister Mary and Sister Lalita who ask for their personal request, including Sister Amuda. Bless them all. Whatever the heart desires might be, O oh Father, fulfill it. Whatever the difficulties and sickness and the problems that might be facing, O oh Father, may the right pierced hand of Christ be able to touch them. I do want to pray for Sister Vilasini, Sister Swasini, and of course Sister Pansy and the family members who lost their father. Oh Father, it is unable to come out of the grief even though one month has gone by. And I believe that you'll be close with them, give them the courage, strength from Havao so that they might be able to endure, come out of all the grief and difficulty. And certainly, oh Father, they might be able to Enjoy the blessings and the joy, peace and happiness only Jesus can be able to bestow upon every individual's life. I want to pray for the Hope Side Community Church, O oh Father, you existed this church for a reason. And I believe that you want to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, use us mightily so that we could be an instrument used by the righteous right hand of Jesus Christ. Especially I want to pray for every member of Hope Side Church. O oh Father, bless them all. Especially when we see the whole world is in turmoil, with disunity, with anger, with mismanagement, inequality, racial feelings. I don't know how the world is going to be healed, but I believe in the name of Jesus that you are in control of every individual, every situation, every community. Help us as Christians, O oh Father, who can give ourselves to you completely. We can make a difference in this community by showing that what true love is all about in our lives. And certainly, O oh Father, love all, whoever they are, whatever they are, 
irrespective of their gender. They're pretty, they're colored. Help us to show that unity in each one of our lives. That can be done only by your Holy Spirit. Give us the double portion of your Spirit so that we all might join together. And being a service-oriented personalities, with kindness, with love and with courteousness, we could reach out people and drawing many people to your kingdom. And especially at this part of these Sabbath hours, so Father, the divine hour, we need you to invoke your presence and sisters as we open your word. The word is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Show us the right way that we might be able to follow. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Come of me with the blood of Christ so that people will not see me. They will see only the words of Christ being pronounced by me. And certainly may your presence help us to enjoy being a father experiencing your love. And so we go out with this hall of worship with a consecrated heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This time the offering will be collected. I request Mr. Mary to please come forward and collect this morning offering. Uh, during the offering is collected, we do have a special song. And, uh, want uh, each one of us to learn this song. It is just a very short song and I uh, hope each one of us will have. Okay. Sister Mary. <coughs> and the song is called as In His Presence There Is Comfort. In His Presence There Is Peace. When we seek the Father's heart, we will find such blessed, blessed assurance in the presence of of the Lord. This will be a special song. Let's all join together and learn this song even though we don't know. It's a very simple song. We can join together and sing this beautiful song. And it is entitled as In His Presence. In His Presence. It will be a special song. We all will be able to learn this song. It's a simple song. It's a beautiful song. I hope we all could be able to enjoy singing, singing this beautiful song. In His Presence. Thank <laughs> Let's join and sing this beautiful song called as Welcome for the Spirit. Yes. 
Welcome, Holy Spirit, will be our theme song. and I believe the Spirit of the Lord will be able to encourage each one of us as we go through this uh, uh, God's Word that He has planned and prepared. Once again, happy Sabbath to all. Happy Sabbath. Hope you all are doing fine. Yes. Okay. Uh, the topic chosen uh, today is called as uh, Don't Be Drunk. There are many questions being asked about uh, drinking. Uh, that is called as social drinking, right? Have you heard about social drinking? And uh, there is an all, also called as a binge drinking. You know, if you have to go to different homes, especially in the western part of the world, and I think so, you know, people are offered a little bit of drink. Or I can precisely say. A little alcohol to be able to. Even if you travel in the plane, like you know, a long distance international flight, they'll be able to give you drinks to be able to drink. And I used to ponder upon thinking that is it good to drink? Is it feasible? Because the second week of every month we concentrate on what? Health matters. Because the Bible says your body is what? The temple. Of God. And the Bible says, you and I have been purchased so we can't do anything as we like. It took Jesus to come down to this earth and die on the cross of Calvary and he has purchased us with his blood. So which means we are his and he is ours. And don't ever forget the church is connected with a woman and Jesus Christ as our bridegroom. Mm -hmm. So the church is betrothed to Christ. Nice. So we are under the jurisdiction of Christ. Christ. So what he says, what he wills plays a pivotal role in each one of our lives in order to live amicable, in order to live a peaceful in order to live a happy, in order to live a joyful and a prosperous life on this earth. As we looked upon, this world is not a home, 
But there are ways that you and I could be able to make this world a place, a better place, a better experience in our family life so that we can portray the real character of Christ. So Bible is always given us an opportunity to be able to rectify men, seek, experience, go forward in every angle of our life. What does the Bible say about drinking? You know, the socially, the world tells, okay, it is fine to take a little bit. It is fine to be able to indulge in socialization. It is fine to indulge yourself uh, in to make yourself happy. But what does the Bible say? Our happiness has to be lie in Jesus Christ. Our happiness and our joy comes from God and God alone. The Bible is absolutely very clear for you and me. When we talk about drinking, what does the Bible say? Because health matters. If we don't have good health, we don't have a sound mind, you and I can never pray. There is a lot of psychological effects and the physical effect there are people who are drinking. If you have to look into the psychological effect of drinking, we have trouble concentrating. Understand this one, we have trouble concentrating. We have loss of coordination. We have loss of critical judgment. We have more swings, which means you and I can never think constantly. And we have raised blood pressure. And then we do have vomiting. And we do have lowered inhibition leading for poor social judgment. And we have done the perception especially in vision. So while drinking, you see a lot of things happen in your body, physically I'm talking about, which affect, which affects your spiritual way of life, which affects your moral way of life, which affects the life itself. And you and I know that very much we are going to have memory loss, lo loss of attention span, trouble learning, and we might be able to get hepatitis, okay, alcohol hepatitis that is called us. And then we can be able to get steatosis, which means fatty liver. So drinking, when people, when they drink, they have a lot of the psychological problems and the physical problems. And it has an effect on the liver, the digestive system, pancreas, central nervous system, cardiovascular health, and then we have reproductive health, and of course even it affects our bones. I want you to think about your life because the Bible says you are wonderfully and marvelously been created in the image of Christ. So you don't have the authority to take which is unwanted to your body and ruin your body. And that's what God talks about. You know, when I have been created in my image, the health that I'm going through, I want you to go through too. I want you to be happy in every angle. Just imagine a person who has all the diseases in his body. Can he be happy? No. The ultimate goal of you and I accepting Jesus Christ as a personal savior. The very word called personal savior implies to your physical body. Your mental stature or your mental capability of how you can be able to worship God depends on the physical well-being. And that's one of the reasons Paul also admonishes and says that I want you to prosper in good health. And no wonder the Bible says, your temple is not your temple. Is that I have built this temple. So I have to dwell in it. So listen to me. So accept me the way how I am. And you are going to live what? Prosperously in every angle. So God is telling us a very important aspect of life. That your health plays a pivotal role in order to make sure that you could be able to be good spiritually too. 
So what does the Bible say when you talk about drinking? And throughout scripture, we should avoid drunkenness at all costs. That's what the Bible says. And throughout the scriptures, it is condemned and it leads to even more wickedness. There are so many warnings in the scriptures on alcohol which should cause us to pause and think about should we fix a glass? Many of us might not be able to be drinkers. I don't know people who have been watching online. Either it might be on YouTube, either it might be on Facebook or wherever the medium is all about. I recommend you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are, I or anyone for the matter who has been able to drink, you will caution them by the word of God. Because we know that God wants us to be a part of Enma. And the scripture admonishes absolutely very clearly. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, the Bible says, And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless action, but be filled by the Spirit. The first verse that we read in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, the Bible says this, And don't get what? Drunk. drunk. Don't get drunk with wine, which leads to what? Reckless action. You see, action follows for the choice that we make. Mm -hmm. And it says, but we be filled with the Spirit. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1. The Bible says, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Strong drink is raging, it says. And whosoever is intoxicated by it is not what? Wise. Wise. You see? A very important aspect of our life. If you and I are not wise, we're going to look into some of the people who are not wise. And we will see some of the incidences which happened in the Bible who was not wise by just what? Drinking. And then in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11, the Bible says, Woe to those who rise early in the morning in pursuit of beer, who linger into the evening inflamed by wine. Because you lose your judgment, your psychoanalytical system is absolutely collapsed and your vision physically, spiritually gets blurred and your social intimacy is absolutely eroded in every angle and naturally your inhibition okay, of poor social judgment plays an important role and you are going to lose in every angle of life what you're speaking, what you're talking, what you're perceiving what you are trying to do others. Have you seen people who are drunk? Oh, they're going to just go around. Boom. They don't know what they're speaking. They'll be laughing and they're not stable. And, uh, you know, their eyes are dim and a whole lot of things. They only want to go fall down in a ditch. They become brain pain. Or sometimes they become brain in pain. Now, I see in India many times it happens that way. You know, people are just falling down just that way. The Bible says, says you are not wise if you start drinking. That's what the Bible says. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 21, the Bible says, uh, In mean, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall never, ever inherit what? Kingdom of? It is ruled out. Anyone for that matter who is a part of drunkenness can never why? Because he is not able to discern what is right and wrong. God has given this mind to discern what is right and wrong. If you and I have been able to take this drink, which means your mind is blurred up, you don't know what is right and wrong, so you do as you like, and then what happens? You are not the lover of truth, and you are not the lover of good, and you are not wise enough. That's the reason the book of Proverbs, or um, um, Solomon says it absolutely very clearly. You have to crave for wisdom. You have to strive for wisdom. And that's the only frontal lobe which helps you to discern what is right and wrong. You and I have been differentiated by animals by knowing just what? Right and wrong. And if you don't want to know what is right and wrong, so naturally drunkenness plays an important role. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, okay, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 21, the Bible says, in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 29 to 35, and it says, uh, who has woe, who has sorrow, who has conflict, who has complaints, who has wounds for no reason, who has red eyes, 
those who linger over wine, those who go looking for mixed wine, don't gaze at wine because it is red. When it gleams in the cup and goes down smoothly in the end, it bites like a snake and stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things and you will say absurd things. You will be like someone sleeping out at sea or lying down on the top of the ship's mast. They struck me but I feel no pain. They beat me but I don't know it. When I wake up, I look for another drink. You see, wine is a mocker. It's just like a drug. Once you get used to the system, you don't know what happens to your body physically. Don't think even about what is discerning, what is right and wrong. Nothing happens to you. You're just like in a vegetative state. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 10 verse 30, the Bible says, No temptations overtaken you except when what is common to humanity. God is faithful. And he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with temptation, he will also provide a way of escape so that you are able to bear it. The Bible says so. When you are in difficulty, when you are in problem, when your mind is absolutely disturbed in every angle, the only way the whole world looks at this to forget about the difficulty and problem, you want to have what? A little drink and spoil your whole body so that you will feel that you are relieved. But that's not the solution. The Bible says, I will never allow you to be tempted more than what you could bear. I admonish in the name of Jesus to each one who are watching today. I want to admonish in the name of Christ, the blood of Christ. And you and I have to be filled by the Spirit in order to make sure that the impending destruction or difficulty or sickness, whatever you might be facing, wine is not the solution for the problem. The solution for the problem is who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Run back to him. Say to him. Seek him and be fine. We are on our own. The body is the temple of God. And he's there to come and help us in every angle of our life. If you and I have been able to be a part of him, he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. The joy and the happiness which the wine gives is absolutely temporary. Just for a moment, you will not know anything. And again, once you wake up, the Bible says, uh, I think you want to have another thing so that you will not have the pain. Uh, it is temporary relief, that's all. But Jesus says, if you come to me, and if I give you to drink, uh, and that's going to be for eternity, and you will never thirst again, you will see the joy being fulfilled in your life amidst all the turmoils and difficulties that we have to go through in our life. So why? It's not what? solution for the problem. And there were many people in the Bible. There were many people in the Bible. Okay, got drunk. Like for example, have you heard about Noah? Mm -hmm. uh, who was Noah? If you have to interact a little bit. Noah was uh, you know, a child of God. You know, How many years did he preach about uh, you know, uh, uh, about the sign? Uh, you know, how many years? 120 years. Was he close with God? Yes. Was he been able to be a part of him? Yes. Did he do the ministry of God? Yes. But what happened after the flood? He was trapped. And what did he do? What happened in his drunkenness? Nakedness. He slept naked. Jesus Christ has come down to this earth to cover the nakedness. What happened with drunkenness? You go back to the original position, not even knowing that you are naked. <clears throat> he had a feast, he got drunk, and you know that what happened? He was removed from the leadership, that's what the Bible says. King Ben Hadad, who was defeated by Rome, by, uh, because he was absolutely drunk. And the classic example that we can be able to give about, in the Bible about drinking is Belshazzar. Have you heard about Belshazzar? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Belshazzar, what did he do? He took the cups which belongs to God's temple 
And then he started what? Drinking and having feast and a lot of things. What happened? What happened next to Belshazzar? Hand Later came on? and wrote. Huh? The hand, the right hand. Writing of the hand. What, what, what is the writing of the hand? Mene. 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 Which means? You have been, you have been found. Hmm. Wanting. Wanting. And then? Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you see people who have been drunk. What has happened? You see the consequences, but they faced. And that's what history tells us. The main part of the message is this. Sin is also just like this. Sin is also what? Just like this. You have a temporary relief. The pleasures of this earth, the lusts of the flesh, you enjoy. And then what? Go ahead and you keep on practicing, practicing, practicing. Just like the just just like once you have a wine, the next time when you get up, you want to have one more cup. So the world will pull you down in every angle of life to get into sin again and again. You are accustomed to sin again and again. Which will blur your mind, which will have trouble concentrating, you lose coordination, you lose critical judgment, you have mood swings, and of course your physical body also deteriorates in every angle because of sin. You have memory loss, you have loss of attention span, you have trouble learning, and you have whole lot of things happening in your body because sin has been ingrained in your body from top to bottom. And that's one of the reasons the Bible says just like the alcohol once you take, it's a slow killer. It kills your internal part of your body in every angle of life. The same way, sin and no wonder God said uh, the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. God doesn't want anyone of us to perish. He doesn't want any one of us to perish. And no wonder the Bible says, for God so loved the world, because every individual has to be saved. Alcohol destroys life, and the same way sin destroys life. It will dictate your way of life. Sin also dictates your way of life which is absolutely contrary to what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 and 9. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Wine destroys families. Sin destroys families. Ends up killing you. Wine ends up killing you. And sin ends up killing you because the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. You know, alcohol always hinders the work of Christ. As the same way sin always hinders the work of Christ. Alcohol changes the personality. You know, you are not the way what you are once you drink, right? The same way sin changes your personality. It changes your personality. Alcohol defines the body. And even sin defines your body. Alcohol destroys life. And sin destroys life. Jesus said, I've come to this earth to give you life in abundance. Not to destroy. So if you and I are purchased by the blood of Christ, you and I are given an opportunity once again to run back to Christ. Wine is not the solution for the problem. Jesus is the solution for all the problems. It is not only you and I are facing Jesus when he was there on this earth. He faced the same problem. You see the way how he faced that. He knelt down. He asked God. He got the power. He enjoyed being in the presence. So even he was 
had difficulty, even though he suffered, uh, even though he was absolutely in a, a lot of difficult positions in his life, but still, he was one of the most happiest and one of the most contentful and one of the most generous and one of the most kindest and one of the most courteous being ever lived on this earth. Jesus Christ, the latest example, which showed us what we are supposed to do. And he has given the same opportunity for you and me to be saved by his grace. Do we want a solution which is temporary or do you want a solution which is permanent? You and I are sinful, God is sinless. You and I are unrighteous, God is righteous. You and I are mortal, God is immortal. You and I are unholy, God is holy. And the same Lord who left the whole heaven and heaven completely and came down to this earth to demonstrate what love is all about for you and me. And such loving father who always has his open arms to call you and me to be a part of him. And is calling you and me to be a part of him today. He wants us to be saved. The wages of sin is death. But if you have to read that a little further says the gift of God is what? Eternal life. The gift was bestowed by heaven. That is Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is there an opportunity for you and me to be able to be a part of Him today? God is calling each one of us. We might have gone astray. We might have been gone astray by our little pleasures that we have in our lives. Many times we might be unable to give it up. The little sins that we cherish. The little pleasures that we have. I think so when Jesus gave himself completely to you and me giving up everything on the cross of Calvary, what more can you and I be able to give up? Can't we be able to give up the great pleasures? Can't we be able to give up this world? Can't we be able to give up the little things that we cherish which hinders our life for our salvation will come as on the new plan and prepare for each one of our lives. Will we not be able to give up uh, anything which hinders the love of Christ that constraineth in our heart? Anything can be able to give up for Christ because God gave it all. Can we be able to give it all to Him so that He could be able to melt us, mold us, fashion us according to His will so that His will in our life might be wrought? It's not that I. It's that price. That's the reason the Bible says Paul is absolutely very much in admonition. He says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And the same Paul says it absolutely very clearly. Absolutely very clearly. He simply says a very beautiful statement. In Christ, you have become what? A new creature. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, sin has God completely took down the curtain which is supposed to be the most happiest place on this earth. And you can see the consequences of sin. And you can see death in every angle of our lives. When we look around, we'll be able to see the tornadoes. When we look around, we see earthquakes happening. When we look around, we see fire being quenching in every angle. When we see a lot of deaths happening, that only reminds us the consequences of what sin could do to humanity. And forget about everything. And you see, even sin can never allow Jesus Christ to peaceably dwell in heaven. So he had to come down and give his life for you and me. And that's the consequences of what sin is all about. I want to urge you in the name of Jesus who are watching today. I want you to give your life to Christ. And see the change that can take place. I want you to give your life to Christ and see the change that you can experience. The Bible says if anyone with any condition, you come to Christ and you will not be You will never go with failure. You will never go with unhappiness. You will go with joy. You will go with peace. I urge you in the name of Jesus. Let us submit ourselves in the mighty hands of Jesus Christ, who is ever willing to forgive, 
who is ever willing to intervene on your behalf? Who is ever willing to come and cleanse you from all unrighteousness? Who is willing to give you whatever the habits that you might be able to possess in your life? He is willing to relieve you. He wants to give you freedom. Uh, the freedom lies only in Jesus Christ and in the power of his love. Will you be able to give yourself? Whatever you might be suffering, I don't know. One of the maladies that you might be suffering, I don't know. One of the sickness that you want to be suffering, I don't know. But wine is not the solution. Jesus is the solution. At this part of the afternoon, I urge you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this body is not our body. It's been given by God. Let us guide, be guarded by His Spirit. And that's the reason the Bible says in Ephesians, the Bible says in Ephesians, it is so beautifully being admonished, and it says, and be not drunk with wine. And I will replace that word that says, and be not be drunk with sin. Where in excess. But the Bible admonishes and says, but be filled with the Spirit. Spirit. May God guide us through. As we ask of Him, as we plead of Him, the Spirit of happily is going to restore. The Bible says it very clearly, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open. My prayer for you this afternoon. Let us ask for the double portion of the Spirit during this unprecedented time. During this time of turmoil. During this time of chaos. During this time of hopelessness. During the time of uncertainty. Let us ask God to fill us with the Spirit. So that the Spirit can take over of our life and we can find meaning in spite of all the difficulties and the problems that we face on this earth. And still be able to accept the grace of Christ in our lives and the eternal salvation that is prepared for every individual. So that I know we are living in this very last days of time. We are not going to live on this earth for a long time. And I know that the Lord is absolutely coming soon. When we see the signs of His coming, the only thing is we don't go far away from Christ, but we go near to Him. Because I know the Lord is about to relieve us from all the pain, the difficulty, the sickness, the problems that we're facing. And I know that He is going to come soon. Take His children home who has kept this body undefined, who has kept us without getting into sin and sin. And if you and I could cooperate ourselves with him, and he's not going to disappoint us. And I know that when it comes to the second time, you and I will be able to go with him, stay with him forever and ever, with that hope and that blessings. Let's enjoy our life in Christ, physically, spiritually, mentally, for eternity. And that's my prayer for you this afternoon. God bless each one as we contemplate on this word. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope this message will help you to be relieved from all the maladies and difficulties that we might be able to be facing in our lives. And let's stand on the promises of Jesus Christ who is always faithful to redeem us from all our sins and maladies. So the song we are going to sing in closing is called as Standing on the Promises of Christ my Savior. 580, 518, 518. <laughs>
standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the Holy Spirit of God appears as sin, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. We are soaked with sin, unable to do what we are supposed to do, O oh Father. We might be wavering, but Lord of heaven, fill us with your spirit, so that, O oh Father, we might follow the instructions of your love and be saved by your grace because you want each one of us to live a life that is acceptable in thine sight. In this very last days of time, we rely upon you to be relieved from every burden of sin and Satan. Yes, so Father, may the worthy hands enshroud us throughout the whole week as we rely upon you. Enjoy the joy, peace, and happiness, the health, physically, spiritually, mentally, and if it's time with. Come back once again the next week on the Sabbath week. We call upon the whole day till then. May your presence go with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining in and God be with you. Take care of yourself and uh, of course there's food prepared for each one of us. Let's all enjoy a uh, little beautiful lunch we just prepared and uh, hope to be back again. And for the online viewers and people who are viewing on the Facebook or YouTube, may God bless you. Take care of yourself. Be safe. And Maranatha, Jesus is coming again. <laughs>